This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome to Seek Reality with your host, Roberta Grimes. Author and attorney Roberta Grimes will explore and illustrate how she, after an extraordinary experience of light in childhood, has discovered channels of communication to the afterlife and how these implications have an effect on our everyday lives. Please welcome the host of Seek Reality, Roberta Grimes. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm thrilled that you're with us today. We're going to have a great time. One of my favorite parts of doing this work is all the wonderful people I meet. Nearly all afterlife researchers that I've met, no matter what their backgrounds, ages, areas of interest, are all sweet and very loving folks who support and care for one another. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. When we all get together, as is going to happen again at the AREI Symposium in September, it's a genuine love fest. Our guest today is one of the leaders in the field of afterlife studies. She and I have not until now spent much time together, but I've long been an admirer of her work. Suzanne Giesman is a very good evidentiary medium, and she's been doing events with Suzanne Wilson. And, of course, you know that I consider Suzanne Wilson to be the greatest living spiritual medium on Earth, period. So our friend, Suzanne with an S, has told me that Suzanne Giesman with a Z is also an exceptional medium. So even though I have personally never had a reading with her, I can vouch for her on Suzanne Wilson's recommendation. And she does take take clients still, but there's a little bit of a wait. We'll talk about that. Suzanne Giesman has written 11 books. She's a former U.S. Navy commander who serves as a commanding officer, a special assistant to the chief of naval operations, and an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So she had quite a career. And then she joined us out here in the world. In her her civilian life, she gets around. She does a lot of public speaking, of which I'm aware, and spiritual teaching and, of course, spiritual counseling. And she does mediumship readings, too, so she's very busy. People as illustrious as Dr. Gary Schwartz and Dr. Wayne Dyer consider her to be a talented medium, which says it all. I mean, they're both extraordinary people, and especially, I know Gary Schwartz, he doesn't pass around compliments lightly. One of Suzanne's particular skills is channeling those that we used to think were dead, and I'm especially eager to discuss channeling with her. I used to tell people that I am as psychic as a post, but then Thomas, my primary spirit guide, said, actually, you know, all your books are channeled. Well, that was humbling. But no wonder they're so easy to write and they come so fast. I'm not doing it. That's so amazing. But then people ask me what channeling is, and I really have no clue. So I'll be glad to look to Suzanne Suzanne Giesman to enlighten all of us. I'll be learning with you. Welcome, Suzanne. I am so glad you're here. Oh, thank you, Roberta. That was quite the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so we we have met, but we really haven't spent much time. And I know you have um, a history of a death and and opening up. But could you just briefly tell us how? I mean, how did you become a medium? How did that all start? Right. I'm not what people would call a born medium. At least I wasn't aware of the ability. But uh, after I had a full career in the Navy and had been retired a few years, my stepdaughter Susan was struck and killed by lightning. So I'm one of those instances of somebody who had a personal tragedy that that propelled them in a new direction. And that's what happened. I, I got interested in mediumship as a way of connecting with our Susan, never knowing that I would one day be a medium myself. And uh, once I discovered that ability, I've just dedicated my my whole life to improving that connection to help others so it's literally all that you do now is is various aspects of connecting with spirit right yes whether it's you know teaching people to connect themselves or writing books about the afterlife or doing readings or channeling that's that's my passion i love it 
So you're still taking people, right? As clients, you still work with people? Well, you know, I just just last week I was so overwhelmed with how many people are on my waiting list, over 350, but my guides, my channel, they said to me, just say yes. So I really just want you to say yes, and some people don't care how long the wait is, and other people will, well, they'll find another medium. And uh, and my goal, my dream, is that people will discover that they can find those answers themselves by the time I get around to giving them a reading. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 this is a real a real problem. I hear from people about it not infrequently that it's very hard to find a very good medium who like yeah. can do it within a year or two. It's just extraordinary. And you said your waiting list is a couple of years. It's getting it's getting close to that, I think. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. Uh, and yeah, what, that's what, why I'm teaching mediums because you know we want to raise the bar we, so that we get more mediums. We, we need a lot more of them. And yes. the hardest thing for medium to do is produce evidence that everyone says there's no question. That's who we're talking to. And I understand from Suzanne Wilson that you're pretty good at that, too. Well, it's funny you say the hardest thing we do. That's the only thing I do. <laughs> well, that, that's, <laughs> it's hard. Well, you know, I we, have to tell you. It's hard. Uh, well, sometimes it, 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 it's this when you get the perfect perfect setup of energy between the the sitter that's the client and the spirit on the other side and me i'm in my just in the right uh right condition it's magical it just flows and then sometimes it's like pulling teeth so it's that's what makes it hard is i can't control other people's energy no that's true well th- this is an exciting thing to be talking about you know mediumship talking with the dead and i can vouch for the fact that I never had actually an evidentiary medium until I first met Suzanne Wilson. But we're going to be talking about something else today. And- this is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Welcome back to Seek Reality. Our guest today, Suzanne Giesman, is an expert on channeling, which is something that I keep telling people, I do, I channel. And then they say, what that? what is that? I say, I don't really have a clue. Just happens to me. It's like, you know, having some sort of a handicap. It just happens. So tell us what channeling is, Suzanne. Okay. It's funny. I realize I never put it into one or two sentences, but it is... When you get your identification with the the human story out of the way and allow higher consciousness to flow through you in such a way that 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 higher information, insights, wisdom, creativity comes through you. You are the instrument for that. So when you tell people that you channel it when you're writing your books, that's what you're doing. You, You stop thinking and you allow spirit, higher consciousness to deliver the information for the books through you. 
<laughs> yes. And what's funny is when I tr- I've tried to write without them, I'm going to write mm-hmm. a book about X. I can't write a word. I literally will sit that's for half it. a day looking at a page and I cannot write a word. Isn't that strange? Well, that's how you know that it's really real when it's happening. And you ju- and I know you must just get in that flow and time just stops, right? Yeah, I, I don't even think about what's happening. I, in fact, they give me a whole table of contents and I never, virtually never change anything on the table of contents. Yeah. So I know yeah. what the book, book is going to be and then they start downloading the book. Amazing. And this is fun. By the way, if, you, if, if everyone, if, if you have the opportunity to, to channel people who know a lot more than we do, do it because it's like the most fun you can possibly have. But how does it happen for you, Suzanne? Well, in, in my book, Messages of Hope, where I tell how I went from Navy commanding officer to this current work as a medium, I tell how I was sitting with a couple of friends. We were just trying to tune into whatever spirits might show up. And suddenly I became aware of this presence of a male spirit and and he said, speak. And I was so startled, that, and, that, and I ignored it. And then he wow. said, speak. And I, I said silently, about what? <laughs> you know? and, yeah. and, and, and he just said, open your mouth. And these words just started coming out of my mouth. And, and the two women who were with me said they about fell off their chair because this voice came through a little deeper, a little bit of an accent. Oh. And that was the start for me. <laughs> when was this? When did that happen? This, oh, gosh, this was probably 2009. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. You and, do uh, it way fancier than I do it, I have to say. They don't talk <laughs> through me. That's. I, and were, were you aware of what was going on, or did you sort of step I, out of I your was, body? I was, I was mildly aware that words were coming out of my mouth, but I just surrendered that need to control it i knew that i still had control that's an important point you never totally give up control you don't let some spirit control you and uh, i was so stunned by it i remember going for a walk with my husband and saying something just happened so we (laughs) did it we tried it again on purpose and brought my husband into it and a couple other people and it was amazing and then we started doing it weekly and i started out speaking very stilted the words were because i was holding back i was holding back and over the years it became so fluent that to me that's part of the the evidence that it's not me uh, people ask my guides sanaya is what they told us to call them they ask them questions and the answers sometimes start before the question is even out of the people's mouth of course because they already know they're where there is no time wow wow so how often do you do this well, I used to do it weekly and for the small group. Then I started doing it in my community monthly. But now I'm on the road uh, traveling half the year, and I don't do it so often publicly. But every single morning I channel a message from Sanaya, and we put it online. And I, I, I know that thousands of people read those messages daily uh, at SanayaSays.com. And they, it's so funny how many people say, they were talking to me today. That was for me. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful? So, spell it so everyone knows. Get your pencil right. up here. What, what is it? What's, Sanaya, this, what's the place? Sanaya is S-A-N-A-Y-A. Sanaya. And that's their name. I have to tell you what, why that's important. And then says, like Simon says. So it's Sanaya, S-A-Y-S dot com. No, 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 punctu- com. no punctuation. Just that's right. great. That's great. Yeah. So, so what does Sanaya mean? Why is that important? Well, when when they so that first time I brought to a voice, that was my main guide, who we call Boris. And then, uh, but later on my birthday, or just a few days after, I think in 2010, something like that, uh, this this masculine and feminine presence. It was like a group showed up, and I said, "Who are you?" And they said, "We are a collective consciousness of your guides, and you will call us Sanaya." And you will write and write and write as Sanaya. I didn't realize at the time I would also speak and speak and speak as them. <laughs> right. So, so I, I immediately went and looked up the name. And, and I thought it was a pretty clever name for them because it, it was a Sanskrit name meaning eminent, distinguished, and of the gods. So that was pretty cool. But it was a couple years later where an original member of this group that I channeled for it said, Suzanne, I just found out that Sanaya is also a an Arabic name meaning flash of lightning, which is how my stepdaughter Susan was killed. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's a very meaningful name for me. It certainly is meaningful. Wow. So you do this every morning. So can you call them up at will, for example, if you wanted to channel right now, could you do it? Pretty much, yeah. They're with me all the time. I just have to do this little shift and they're there. (laughs) Really? Yeah. What kind of message do they give? Oh, it's always about how to live our lives with more love in them more self-love, more peace. They're philosoph- philosophical guides and wisdom guides. They, they, uh, it was funny because one time in a channeling session, somebody asked a question, and for the first time ever, they weren't immediately there with the answer. And there was this pause, and they said, you will wait while we seek a scientist. And there was this small pause, and they came back and answered the question. <laughs> Seek a sign. That's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. They, they've got their own sort of work connections, too, haven't they? This is their job, and they're doing yeah. their job well. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. They're here to help us raise our consciousness. That's it. And uh, a lot of their, I mean, it's all common sense uh, information and, and advice, but uh, it, many times it's things we can't hear too often, and they use parables and great analogies, and they really get you thinking. Yeah, wow. So do they tell you things about your own life? Like, uh, you know, you will, you'll soon have a, you're soon getting a gift, or, you know, watch well, out. Oh, oh, let me tell you, walking on the trail today at Monticello by myself, uh, I was back in the, deep in the woods, and I was there for exercise. I'm charging along. And Sanaya drops in and says, turn right and go to that bench. I could see it, 50 feet down the trail. And I, I said, I don't want to sit down. I want exercise. I don't have time to sit on a bench. And they said, there is a gift there for you. And I thought, oh, am I going to have an experience with a spirit? So I went. I've learned to follow. And this is just hours ago. I turned, went, went to the bench, and there on the bench is a bracelet And I said, what's this all about? And they said, you will appreciate it. I pick it up, and it's a bracelet with a butterfly on it, which is my stepdaughter Susan's sign. If you've read Messages of Hope, she's the butterfly girl. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And then they said, pick it up. You will see the word is meaningful. Well, this butterfly has a word engraved on it, and the word is phoenix. And our Susan had a giant tattoo on her hip of the phoenix. Oh, my goodness. You, that you can't really make buzz. this stuff up. No, you can't. <laughs> that, that's beautiful. Yeah. What a what a wonderful gift from her. Oh. That is just beautiful. Yeah. I, and I, so I, I never would have gone down <laughs> there. But I know when they say do something, I listen. If it's not, you know, it's never dangerous. So, okay, I, I have my own way of thinking. I'm going to walk and I'm going to walk this way but if they say go there there's a reason now (laughs) people listening are wondering how could that happen well a variety of ways but it could even be an airport something that was picked up somewhere else and put there for you in that moment that's beautiful mind-boggling I can think of several explanations but you know in the end it doesn't matter they knew it was there and steered me right there yeah, that is, that is beautiful, yeah. and and so you're you're doing this. I know in in groups, right? Your people, yes, large groups. <laughs> how how and, large? Uh, I think the largest group I've had is a little over two hundred. That's quite large. I'd call that large. Qualifies. Yeah, it and, it takes a a real leap of faith for me because you know I'm used to preparing talks yes. and presentations for large groups, but there's no way to prepare for this. No, None. no. I, wow. I don't know what they're going to talk about. I know it's going to be about love and all that, but it's funny because I'll be sitting there, they're talking through me, and I'm listening like somebody in the audience, and I'll be thinking, oh, they never talked about that before. Oh, that's new. <laughs> yeah, wow. And th- you're going to be doing this at the symposium, right? Are you going to be doing a, se- a ch- session of channeling? Yes, I have a one forty-five minute session where I talk what channeling is, how it works, what the point is, kind of like this interview, but a little bit more in detail. And then a second 45-minute session where I actually bring Sanaya through, channel them, they'll answer I questions. love it. I'm going to be in the audience. I love that. Hey. I just love it. No, this is, I, I realize it sort of strains people's minds to think this way, and oh, I would sure. have trouble with it too. 
Oh, but I ha- do too. Did but it happens to me. It actually happens to me. I could okay. not write a word without these people. And and I should just say, if anyone is curious, I actually have two sets of of guides that channel to me. One is um, nonfiction books, and they uh, – Thomas heads that one, my primary guide, who actually once owned Monticello, as you know. And and uh, so the, the, the fiction people sort of stay back, but um, what they do – in fact, I've been t- – when I've said, I want to do fiction now, I've been told, no, we have to wait until Thomas is, is through with what he's doing. But he's graciously letting me do some fiction work, and I'm having so much fun with it because <laughs> – Doing a novel is really hard if you try to do it yourself, because I have tried to do it myself. But when she's doing it, um, it's very easy. Uh, I, I have to say, she, there are three of them; they work together. And yeah, you know, you can't, you really can't make this stuff up. But it's extraordinary. They're doing a seven novel series through me, and um, each of the novels is a hundred thousand words long, and oh, it's. God. It's yeah, exactly. We're we're talking a magnum opus, a shelf of books. And it's just the best fun I could ever have. It just when it when it happens and it's really going, I can't begin to tell you how wonderful it is. So, if you're listening and this all interests you, maybe you have a, a calling to also channel because Lord knows I never dreamed I did. I, I learned two years ago that I actually all this stuff I've written was channeled. It's all news. So, if you open yourself and and what Suzanne just said was she opened herself. She, she trusted, and that's really what you need to do if that is your voyage they will come and work with you and you can test them they don't mind you know say you know if this is really you give me a sign and and a lot of times they'll put they'll they'll put the idea to ask for a sign a specific sign in your head knowing that that's right in your path did that make sense of course Uh, absolutely it does yeah like ask for a yellow daisy as a sign that this is really us and then you walk out your door and somebody's left it on your doorstep, you know, because they know. And it's just a really great way of proving their presence. I ask for signs all the time and get them. The thing is that, that spirit in working with us wants very much to make sure that we know that, that, that they're real and they are working with us. And they are very they're, they don't want us to be afraid ever. They're very eager to reassure us. But they also are eager, just as, as Suzanne said, they're eager to show us that they're real because that, yeah. that makes this so much better. When we come back, we're going to talk about the fact that Suzanne channeled Jesus too. So we're going to do a little shop talk about what it's like to channel the master. This is Roberta Grimes on Seek Reality. We'll be right back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Again, this is Roberta Grimes with Unseek Reality with Suzanne Giesman, and we're talking about channeling, which is a very recent topic for me to even be interested in because I never knew that I was channeling all the – everything I've ever written has been channeled. And the, the most extraordinary experience of my life was when – my primary spirit guide set me up. It was a setup. I don't care what anybody says. He set me up. I didn't know this was going to happen. And, you know, I was cranky a little bit in the beginning. But um, Thomas had been working with me on the fun books. And then in 2015, in the spring, uh, he told me I was going to write a book, uh, which was a book that he, when he was Thomas Jefferson, had written but never published. Uh, it was about what Jesus really came to say and his real teachings and what he meant to do. Okay, I'll do it with for you because he insisted. I, I said, fine, I would do it with him. And so 
we started in. I got the table of contents. I, I love writing with Thomas because he makes me feel so smart. And and so so then one day, actually it was I think the the ninth of June, twenty fifteen. Um, he he suddenly sees Suzanne Wilson in a parking lot. She said he actually occupied her body. And he said, um, you know, pardon the higher energy. You are working directly for the master now without the benefit of, of um, uh, filters that would slow the transmission. Let us know if it overwhelms the physical. I didn't know what that meant. But mm-hmm. 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and there was a very different, much stronger uh, presence. And I ran at 2 o'clock in the morning. I ran to my computer and I worked until 8 o'clock the following evening. And... It, this was the most amazing thing because when Thomas works with me, I feel like I'm smart. When I when this being was working with me, I felt like he's smart and I'm a word processor. That's how it felt. And I could hear him sometimes t- talking in my mind. It was just the most amazing thing. We we did a 40,000-word book in two weeks and, and done. It was done, completely done. So that was my experience of channeling Jesus. Um there was nothing familiar about this at all. It was, it was, it was. I was the word processor, and and I literally, quite literally, I I, I didn't even read what we were writing until after it was over. And then I was alarmed by it, but that's another story. So I, I understand you had you also had Jesus appear when you were doing some channeling. What was that like? Well, it had come to me quite a few times privately at home, and I was cheeky enough to ask for evidence is this really you because i had been raised with no religion whatsoever no personal relationship with jesus and i felt very uncomfortable about even the thought of conversing with him and he put me in my place and said i am your brother and don't put me on a pedestal (laughs) yeah it was very but even though his energy pushed me back in my chair so much that the first time it really hurt my neck and uh And then, then he said it should not hurt to bring me through and relax. And uh, and so I asked him for specific Bible verses, because I'm not conversant in the Bible, that would be relevant to let me believe. And, oh, he really, he made it quite clear it was him. And so it, I was quite shocked when he came through in, a, in some community channeling sessions where I live in Florida. But he masked who he was for my sake, because they know how uncomfortable I was. And so what happened was I was channeling for a large group. That was the group of over 200 people at at a church in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, people were asking Sanaya questions. So it was my regular group, Sanaya, speaking. And all of a sudden, somebody asked a question about Jesus. And I felt this shifting in my energetic field. And I thought, oh, no. He's going to answer this himself. I, I thought, oh, no, because I was not comfortable being somebody who publicly channeled Jesus. Yes. That's just my own, you know, my own. It was my challenge at the time. It's not anymore. And uh, so he, he stepped into my energy field and answered the question, and everybody in that audience could tell what happened. It got so quiet. I could hear as my own self, as he's speaking through me, I could hear people crying in the audience. Yeah. And inside, I'm thinking, my, my biggest fear was, oh no, there's a retired admiral in the audience, and there's a, <laughs> there's a Catholic priest in the audience. What are they going to think of, of me? See, at the time, it was all my own fears. Of course. And, and yep. from the teaching he's given me since then, None of this is about me. It's all about Christ consciousness and realizing there is, you know, it's it's only about our unity. And so what was so wonderful about that was afterwards, I, I was afraid to even face this admiral. You know, what are you going <laughs> to think of this former Navy commander who channels, allegedly channels Jesus? And she said to me, what a gift, one of the greatest moments of my life. To witness oh, that. wow. And, yeah, and then I went up to the Catholic priest, who I didn't know, but uh, we, we had been slated to have lunch together. And when we got together, I was a little hesitant. He didn't even bring it up. So I said, uh, what did you think uh, when um, I, Jesus came through the other day? And he looked at me with, with uh, just a shrug of his shoulders, and he said, I recognized my friend immediately. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow. And I, and I think it's true. I mean, I mean, I never questioned who this was, um, it because it was such a different energy and so over really a strong energy. Oh, it and, is. 
and but Thomas yeah. said, you know, he he was toned down a lot to to be able so I so I would be able to bear it, I guess. Yeah. But but what what t- touched me so much, especially as it went on, and and um, we I guess he became more comfortable working with me. I would hear him say things as if he was thinking as he was working. I mean, he said, he said in my mind, if you love me, then listen to me. I thought, oh, nice. wow. You know, I mean, I, I, it, it's, it's, and other things too. I, I wrote the, down the ones I could remember, uh, and they're in Liberating Jesus. But to, I mean, I, then it, for the first time I thought about what it must be like to be Jesus and to have been misunderstood for 2,000 years and to be waiting patiently for people to figure out that he really meant what he said. Even though he says in the Gospels he means what he says. If He says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And still people go through all this, it matters that he was crucified stuff. I mean... I, I, anyway, I had, I, he, put, he had me in tears with some of the things he said. I felt, had felt such sympathy for him. But yeah, he is our friend. What a friend he is. What a, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And so he shows up sometimes, is what you're saying to you. That's my yeah, only he experience. He showed up at the, sure. uh, at the event that I did with Suzanne Wilson. She saw him standing beside me. I, I so uh, appreciate the fact that she sees the spirits with her uh, eyes objectively. I only see in my mind's eye. But she she saw him, and so she kind of set me up. I was channeling for the group, Sanaya, my regular team, and they said, we will take a question. And from the back of the room, I heard Suzanne's voice saying, does Master Jesus have a message for us? And oh, all wow. of a sudden, I feel him stepping into my field, and I thought, oh, she did that to me on purpose. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't, for, it wasn't something to do to me. It was for the group's benefit because she saw him there. Of course. And, uh, Others did as well, which is so affirming to me to see that light and then to see it settle over me. People who have never even saw auras saw that. It was miraculous. Not really, you know, because it's it's real. It's what happens. But for those who, who have this set belief system that that kind of thing is not possible, that becomes miraculous. It's certainly, yes. Well, I, I still... I mean, a miracle is something that could be a perfectly normal thing we just don't understand yet. But it's exactly. still, it's wonderful all the wonderful. same. Yeah. So what, what has Jesus said when, when, when he, you were channeling him? Well, it is, it's the non-fear-filled messages that, that you can find anywhere. But he says it with such fluency this, that, that, yes, he and the Father are one, but so are we. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that, yeah. And and I've I've had him drop in, uh, just pop in on me when I've asked my regular group Sanaya for help. Like I, I'm having challenges with this friend of mine. I don't know how to deal with her. What do I do? And he'll just just drop in to show me that that you know if he can treat me with kindness, I can treat her with kindness. That kind of thing. Or yeah. or I'm having trouble with a, a family member and. All of a sudden, I, in my mind's eye, I saw that family member standing in front of me with a zipper over their face. And all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, that zipper came down and out stepped Jesus. Oh. About, oh, that's talk beautiful. talk about a beautiful analogy. <laughs> if we could oh. see each other as wearing these costumes that are just zipped up and just and, pull that zipper yes. down and the Christ, you know, that one who is one with all that is, is within right. all of us. Oh, Jesus that's being beautiful. the perfect analogy for one who knew they were one with the source. Oh, that that was life changing too. I I, that's I went beautiful. out like that. Yeah, I went to a sewing <laughs> store and I bought a zipper and I laid laid it on my dresser so I would see it every day as a reminder to see other people that way. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I think I mean I I feel privileged to have been able to do Liberating Jesus for my beloved Thomas because this is the book he wanted to publish, you know, 200 years ago and now it's finally out. Um yeah. but to do it for Jesus. And I since was told that that um actually I although he was preparing me to do his work, 
um, there, there was a Thomas was there was a period in the 80s when um, they realized that the uh, the Course in Miracles was way over people's heads. They decided they would do a simple restatement of uh, the teachings of Jesus, and he was looking for someone to do the channeling. And so Thomas, bless his little heart. He volunteered me to be the one. And they didn't know if I could channel, which is why my Thomas exists. This man, who during his lifetime as Thomas Jefferson was so unbelievably private, because I guess it was convenient, it was a story he knew well, he guided me through researching and then writing this story about his marriage and the Revolutionary War. I had no idea at the time. I just thought I was extremely brilliant. I was brilliant. <laughs> so and this was going to be my thing. I was going to write about historical people. So I selected the Winslows in Massachusetts, did the research. It didn't go nearly as well. But I said, but I, but I can do this because I remembered doing my Thomas. The whole thing was just, it just was written immediately. I spent a year trying to write another similar historical, what I thought at the time was a novel. I could not get beyond the first sentence. I finally gave up in frustration. I stopped writing altogether at that point. And that was when he guided me to start doing intensive afterlife research. But they were preparing me all this time, he now oh, says, yeah. to write that book. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Isn't life amazing? And to people listening, please understand, if you want to have this kind of life badly enough, give your life to God. The reason all of these things happen is that that's what I do every day. Whatever you want me to do, I am doing it. Just show me how. Actually, what I say is, thank you for giving me work to do, and thank you for showing me how to do it. And yeah, yeah. It, it, all you have to do is show up. That's what Suzanne has done. She's not even naturally psychic, which I think is unusual, and, and bless you for that, dear. But I, all you need to do, if it's important to you to be of service, can't be something you want for yourself, has to be something you want to do for God. There aren't enough people offering themselves. Just do it. It's funny. You know, I say that all the time, Suzanne. Almost nobody ever is willing to trust God enough to give their life to God. It's just amazing to me because it's what, what God has planned for you is so much better than what you can think up yourself. So do it. Yeah. It's funny because um, today's message that you know, the one on Sanaya says dot com. I also put it on Facebook was all about, you know, do, are you willing to surrender and, and be guided like that? Yeah. But it's it, I'm trying it's, to pull it up now because it was pretty it was very we're, clever while she's pulling it up we're going to just take a quick break meanwhile this is Roberta Grimes with Suzanne Giesman on Secret Reality we'll be right back This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. 
This is Roberta Grimes on Seek Reality with Suzanne Giesman, who I love getting to know because I've, I've known her and know what known of her and watched her work, and it's great to get to be friends. But she was going to look up something that her guide said today. Well, can, can you tell us what that was about, Suzanne? Yes, you were, we were just talking about just surrendering and letting God um, pull the strings, basically. And it was funny because this morning, Sanaya in meditation gave me the message that says, uh, the, the last line of it says, you are part of something far greater. And when you not only allow love to pull your strings and guide you, but you shift your identity from the one who is who is like a doll, I'm paraphrasing here because it's not all relevant here, to being the love which you are, then you understand the meaning of ascension. So it's, it's learning to rise above our human identity and, and, and come into alignment more with the source that, that truly allows more love to flow in our lives. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, one of the things I learned very late in life is that it's so much more fun and joyous and makes you so much happier when you literally surrender everything that you have you are or or ever have been or ever will be and to something greater um it's oh, yeah. it's the it's the best i mean here's thomas who in in his next to last lifetime was such an important person and he chose me to be his avatar now and i'm doing his work now and a lot of it i don't even understand which is who cares? Um, I'm here. I, I just want to be of service. I want to help. And, and it's beautiful. What a wonderful way to live. I mean, I had my turn with this body. Now it's his. He can do what he likes. I just try to follow along and do the best I can. So tell me what you're going to be doing at the symposium. And again, this is the AREI Afterlife Research and Education Institute Incorporated Symposium, which is going to happen in September in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's September 15 to 17. And the and this is of course in 2017, and afterlifestudies.org is the website. What what yeah, are you going well, to be doing there? As I mentioned, I have two sessions. One where I'm doing an introduction to channeling and talking about how it works and what it's all about, and showing people that it is a very real phenomenon. And then the second session, actually doing a demonstration of channeling, which is also called trance mediumship. And then uh, I have a three-hour workshop on the third day of the conference, which I call Living in the USA, but that's United States of Awareness. So oh, wow. Those are words there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's how to merge your awareness as a human being with your awareness as a soul for a greater flow in your life, for greater peace, and, and uh, fulfilling your purpose here. So it's a really... It's a great workshop where I share my seven steps uh, process for connecting with higher consciousness. And then I'm also uh, very honored to be part of a panel with several mediums. Of We'll be talking about learning mediumship and can you learn it and uh, just really opening up the, the educational aspects of mediumship. I love the idea of your workshop especially because I hear from you must too, hear from so many people who are trying to find their meaning in life. I often feel when I, because I'm not a good counselor, but I do try to counsel people as I can. And very often I feel that they're being called. That's why they're they're feeling restless and oh, feeling yes. feeling oh, yeah. this need to find their, you know, someone's, they, they agreed before they were born to do something and now they're kind of getting the, the, the wake-up call, it's time to do it. But because they're so tight within themselves and they're, they're fearful, I mean, it, there's no need to fear any of this. We are infinitely loved. The only power that exists and actually is powerful is love, nothing else. So there's nothing to be, to be afraid of. And I just, sometimes I just want to shake them and say, you know, just, just let go and let trust that, that spirit is going to take better care of you than you ever could. But it's hard. Don't you find it's hard? That, that well, I used to, but now I just so know in my in my soul that that everybody's exactly where they're supposed to be, and that 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 challenge within them, that that restlessness, is is just the seed opening up, and they're on their way. So you really believe that they are going to be found, or will find their purpose. I, I oh, should... not necessarily. It's just, but eventually, yes. Eventually, everybody does. The timeline is different for everybody, but I just know that it's unfolding perfectly. Or, you know, knowing that that spirit's in charge, even when we exert our will, I just love. It's basically loving what is. A lot of people use that term, but just saying, okay, 
this is perfect. I'm not going to argue with that. What a, well, that's lovely. I'll try that because sometimes <laughs> I really kind of, you know, fret about them some. It's come so easily for me. All I had to do was give my life to God and it all unfolds just as I guess it's supposed to unfold in my life. So I I suggest to people, give your life to God. Say these words every day. Most people won't do it. I'd say uh, maybe... One percent of the people I've said that to have gotten back to me and said, "Okay, I'm doing that now." And then I never hear from them again because I guess it all works. I have no idea. But but is there is there something you would especially like people to know about all of this? Yes, that it is absolutely real, and what opens the door for the personal experience of the greater reality. The number one and first step is belief that it is at least possible. Because as soon as you say that's crazy, those people are off their rocker, you have just shut the door to yes. the majority of the experiences. By grace, you may have an experience that you can no longer ignore, but the belief that, okay, I'm at least willing to entertain the prospect that this may be real. So show me a sign. Show me what to do. If somebody's listening to me, show me. <laughs> So, so, that so that's what they should, if they believe they're being called, they should simply say, all right, I believe I hear, hear that you're calling to me or that I'm supposed to respond to you. I, please give me a sign so I can feel confident that's going on or something. Yeah, you, you, that, you kind of shift your awareness and, and you have to acknowledge that there is a higher consciousness than yours and you just connect with it through intention. Just like right now, I am talking to you. Whoever you is, you know, my, yes. if some, like, are you out there? Can you hear me now? If you can hear me now, I would like to be guided. I'm ready to be guided. I need to yes. know. Show me. So, you know, without getting wrapped around the axle about who it is you're talking to, because it's all God anyway. It is all God anyway. Ask. Absolutely. Totally right. You just ask. And then you ask for signs along the way. Validate that I'm not crazy. I'm not losing my mind. Give me a sign. And you can ask for specific signs. What? Because what's put in your mind, many, as we said earlier, quite often is what is just down, down the road for you. Suzanne, how can people get in touch with you? Wait, what's your website? No, okay, that. well, my name's a little hard to spell, which is SuzanneGiesman.com, so I made it easy. The same website you can get to by writing out the words loveatthecenter.com. Just loveatthecenter.com. Oh, that is easy. Right. Yeah. And, and, and basically, she is Suzanne with a Z. Um, Suzanne Wilson is Suzanne with an S, which we all who are friends with both of them find to be fun. But thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, this has been you, fun. It's fun. I, <laughs> that's the whole point of life, after all. And um, yeah. we, we will do this again. But meanwhile, think about coming to the symposium because there'll be a lot of Suzanne Giesman there. And as you can see, that's a wonderful thing. So... It's time for me to say, as I always say, dear friends, you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get everything that that means, it's going to change everything in your life for the better. Next week, your guest is going to be your host. It's been, believe it or not, two and a half years since I last talked about death and the afterlife on Seek Reality, even though that seems to be the topic that's of most interest to most of you. And I'm sorry, I've become very distracted. We're going to remedy that next week. We'll talk about all the details of what heaven is like, how the death process happens, what reality is, all of it, and the beautiful details of this most universal of all journeys the glorious time when we all get to go home. The news is all good, so you can look forward to this. This is going to, We're going to have a lot of fun with this. And there is some new information, too, I think, things that you haven't heard before. So please join us next week. Today, our guest has been Suzanne Giesman. She's one of America's foremost mental mediums, two-year waiting list, but she is, she's still taking reservations, so you might think about that. She's an internationally recognized authority in a number of related fields, including spiritual development and what we've just talked about, spiritual channeling. She's written 11 books, including Messages of Hope and Wolf's Message, that I know is a recent one. In person, Suzanne is just a delight. She's a real person. She's gracious. She's lovely. 
Think about coming to the AREI Symposium in September and meet her and see her in action. One of the great things about the symposium is the presenters don't sort of hide behind a screen. Uh, we, we, we meet, we mingle, we have fun. The best part of it for me is I get to meet so many new people. Go to afterlifestudies.org for more information. And frankly, the symposium is filling up fast. So if, if you're thinking about coming, you might think about moving on that because I think this is going to be our biggest one yet my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch The Fun of Growing Forever and The Fun of Living Together, you can order them through bookstores, on Amazon and they're available in, as audiobooks and in 34 languages worldwide if you'd like to talk to me about anything, my books or anything at all, you can always contact me through robertagrimes.com and I answer emails. But please make sure you give me your, your correct address because if I don't have your email address, I can't. It's very sad for me. I write a whole email and then when I hit send, it turns out it wasn't a good address. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I love doing this. Bless you for being there. Now, please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being. And you in particular, you in particular are infinitely loved. <laughs> 